right, welcome back. Uh, we were talking about the origin of Islam. We had looked at Muhammad's story, how he was visited by the angel Gabriel, uh, decided to spread the word of Islam by moving to Medina and then back to Mecca where he destroyed the idols in the Kaaba and uh, established Mecca as the holiest place uh, for Muslims. So we're going to pick it up there. We're going to look at the core beliefs of Islam. And one of the things you'll hear a lot about if you hear about Muslims and, and what they do, you hear about the five pillars of Islam. Now, I'm not going to read them here. This is just one look at them. Uh, we want to look at and specifically see what those uh, different pillars are. Uh, so we're going to look at Islam growing and expanding. Now, <clears throat> Muhammad did not name a successor. When he died, there wasn't somebody to carry on his work. Um, so that's going to become a little bit of a point of contention for, for Muslims, even in the modern world today. So Muhammad did not name a successor uh, or instruct his followers on how to choose one. Uh, tribal customs led to the election of a guy named Abu Bakr, uh, which is a loyal friend of Muhammad, to be the successor. But he's not, he's not the same blood as Muhammad. He's not his son or, or a relative. Uh, and some people are going to have a problem with that. So Abu Bakr basically becomes the first caliph uh, or caliph, uh, which means successor or deputy. So he's going to be the one who continues on Muhammad's work. So later, as I mentioned, later disagreements over who should succeed caused a split in Islam. So what you get are a couple branches of Islam. You get the Shia or Shiite version of Islam. So those who follow Shia are known as Shiites. They believe that the, the caliph needed to be an actual descendant of Muhammad, blood relative of Muhammad. Uh, so there are followers of this today. The other side are Sunni Muslims. Sunni Muslims acknowledged the first four caliphs as rightful successors of Muhammad, even though they weren't of the same blood as Muhammad. They were holy men who, who carried on his work, they just weren't related to him. You find a lot of Sunnis in the world, specifically uh, there's Sunnis in Iraq, uh, Afghanistan. The Shia version is definitely predominant in modern day Iran. Um, so if you want a little bit of an idea where those uh, are found today, that would be some examples of that. All right, so looking at the beliefs of Islam, the five pillars are going to be very, very critical to understanding um, Islam. And yes, you are going to need to know these for your quiz on Islam at the end of this unit. So here they are. Um, the first of the five pillars is faith. What it means and what, what they believe in is there is no God but Allah, and Muhammad is the messenger of Allah. So you have to accept that first. If you can't accept that, you really can't be an Islam. Uh, you can't be a Muslim uh, because you're not accepting the fact that Allah is the one true God. All Muslims pray five times a day, and they try to aim towards Mecca. And they'll roll out a little bit of a, a mat, and they'll. Uh, perform their prayers on usually they cleanse themselves first by washing their hands and feet and things like that uh, but then they pray five times a day towards Mecca third one is giving alms alms is like charity so give alms or give money for the poor so you notice so far with these three pillars it's a pretty positive religion you're praying um, you're you're acknowledging one true God you're giving to other people uh, these are the cornerstone of the Islamic faith the fourth one is fasting. Each year, there's the holy month of Ramadan. And it's not, it doesn't take place the same time every year. But during this holy month of Ramadan, Muslims must fast between dawn and sunset. That means they don't eat anything during the day. Um, and at night, they might just have a little bit of something just to keep their bodies nourished. It's not like they go hit up Pizza Ranch or OCB to try to just plow in a lot of food. Uh, but each year during the month of Ramadan, they fast. Uh, it's supposed to help make them humble, um, understand what it's like to live without food and things like that. The last one is the pilgrimage. Basically, it's expected of all Muslims that they visit the city of Mecca at one point in their lifetime if they're capable. This is known as the Hajj, H-A-J-J. So they are expected to go visit Mecca, and of course many do this multiple times, but uh, it's expected that you go visit the Kaaba and go see the holy city of Mecca. So together, these five 
pillars really make up the cornerstone of what Muslims believe in. <clears throat> Almost all religions have a holy text. The Quran is the holy text for Muslims, so it's the Islamic holy text. Uh, in, in it, Allah is the source of all authority. doesn't really surprise us. And it's written in Arabic. Now, there are, of course, translated versions, but most really believe that the really only true version of the Quran is the Arabic version. So um, some people won't even uh, read a, an English translated version for that reason. All right, our last thing we're going to talk about here is we've, we've established where Islam came from. We looked at Muhammad's story in part one. We've now looked at some of the core beliefs with the five pillars. The last thing we want to do is look at links to Judaism and Christianity because these religions do have a lot in common, even though some people don't want to believe that in the modern world. People like to distance themselves from other religions. They like to really accept their beliefs and their beliefs only, but honestly, there's a lot more in common here than people really uh, typically understand. So Muslims, Christians, and Jews all trace their ancestry back to Abraham. We already made that clear. We know uh, Abraham was the, the father of the Hebrew people. The Hebrews later became the Jews. Well, Christians later were part of the Jewish uh, tradition. They split and left uh, following Jesus' teachings. Um, so Christians come out of the Jewish faith, and then here we have Muslims who also trace their uh, ancestry back to Abraham because of the story of the Kaaba that I told you just a little bit ago. Now, on the Muslim side, to Muslims, Allah is the same God that is worshipped in Christianity and Judaism. They believe they're all worshipping the same God. Christians and Jews don't necessarily see this this way. Again, they like to keep their distance from, from Muslims. Um, but Muslims believe that Allah is the same God worshipped in Christianity and Judaism. Now, I'm going to read this one to you, and then I'm going to try to explain it to you. The Quran is the word of Allah as revealed to Muhammad in the same way that Jews and Christians believe the Torah and the Gospels in the Bible were revealed to Moses and the New Testament writers. So what that's saying is they've got a book, Everybody's got a book that was revealed to somebody important in their faith along the way that we still believe in today. So whether it's the Quran, the Torah uh, in Judaism, the Gospels, which is part of the Christian Bible, they're all, they all kind of have the same meaning to the people who read them. So what that makes all of these people, all of these religions, is they're, all three of them are people of the book. They have a book that they follow due to their use of a holy book. So it gives you some kind of uh, insight into how these religions are somewhat similar or at least have some similar ideas. All right, that's going to wrap up our story here on the rise of Islam and the core beliefs of Islam. So we'll return to our constructive response questions here to see if we can't wrap it all up. The first question says, compare and contrast the development of Christianity and Islam. Well, you want to make some comparisons here first. We both know that Christianity and uh, Islam developed as monotheistic religions, um, you know, similarities, they both have a holy book for the Christians, it's the Bible, for the Muslims, it's the Quran. Uh, certainly they both have a link to Abraham, as we mentioned briefly. Um, to Muslims, they both believe, uh, or they believe that both religions uh, worship the same God. Christians aren't quite as uh, willing to accept that. Um, so we have some comparisons there that certainly come from the development of Islam. Some of the differences, though, if we want to contrast, uh, Jesus was seen as divine. He had healing powers. He um, could walk on water, change water to wine. You know those stories if you're familiar with your biblical history. Whereas Muhammad, who started Islam, was not seen as divine. He didn't have any extra powers like that. He just spread the one true word of Islam, which uh, was that there was one God, Allah. Um, you know, we can talk about some of the differences too. Christianity developed under the Roman Empire uh, over in uh, Palestine, basically where modern day is, uh, Israel is, uh, with Jerusalem there. That's where Jesus was crucified. Whereas um, Islam developed on the Arabian Peninsula under Bedouin culture, uh, certainly Mecca and Medina are two of their very holy cities uh, in that region. So we've got a lot there that we can use that are similar and different. So you just want to use some of those as comparisons and contrasts to Christianity and Islam in terms of its development. 
Second one, describe the core beliefs of a Muslim. You want to talk about the five pillars of Islam, uh, praying five times a day towards Mecca. There's only one God, Allah, and that Muhammad is the prophet, um, giving alms to the poor, uh, pilgrimaging, pilgriming to Mecca uh, called the Hajj once in your lifetime, and uh, fasting during the holy month of Ramadan. And we could certainly then talk about the Quran being their holy book. So those are some of the core beliefs of a Muslim. So there we've got our... our Questions answered. Uh, you want to go ahead and rate yourself on a four, three, two, one scale. There, uh, make sure you self-monitor yourself to know if whether you're learning this material or not. So, hope you learned something. Uh, that'll do it for us here. We'll see you next time.